starting to know this jingle by heart. I think for the next month I'll be going... <laughs> Anyhow, ladies and gentlemen, I'm the director of the entertainment division here at Reed Meadham. My name is Zanda Kirkov, and on behalf of my entire team, welcome to this joint MIP TV and Connected Creativity keynote. We have a real treat for you this afternoon. Tiffany Schlein, award-winning filmmaker, digital innovator, will give us a talk on creating and engaging in the 21st century. And that will be followed by a special screening of her latest documentary, Connected, an autoblogography about love, death, and technology. And then finally followed by a Q&A. That is just not an easy word. <laughs> Honored by Newsweek as one of the women shaping the 21st century, Tiffany is known throughout the world for her thought leadership, groundbreaking documentaries, and innovative use of technologies. Tiffany's diverse accomplishments include founding the Webby Awards, the International Academy of Digital Arts and Science, and receiving about 44 awards already for her work. And in her spare time, she also finds the time to advise Secretary State Clinton and to sit on the advisory board of MIT's Geospatial Lab. Clearly, this dynamic lady does not need much sleep. Please join me in welcoming Tiffany Schlein. Let's do it Thank you. Oh, oh, I didn't do both. I didn't do both. <laughs> um, it's great to be here. I have to share with you that the last time I was here, I was 22 years old and I was a broke, struggling filmmaker and I came here trying to raise money for this film I was working on called Zoli's Brain. And I went to the Majestic Hotel with my whole crew. We were all women, we were all in our 20s. And, they, and Arnold Schwarzenegger, who I heard was here last night, was having a huge party at the Majestic. And I went in there behind a palm tree and I popped in my tape to try to think that maybe investors would see it. And anyways, we got kicked out of the hotel. So it's really nice, 20 years later, <laughs> to be back here with a film that I did complete. Um, anyway, so it's really one of those days I've been totally savoring such a gorgeous day, and I've just been really glad that I'm not 22 years old, really broke, <laughs> trying to make a movie. Anyways, um, so I'm going to talk about creating and engaging in the 21st century. I know there's all these terms that are being used. Um, like transmedia, cross-platform. You know, I'm from San Francisco, so we have like cross-dressers, transgender, you know, like all these terms sound very much like a lot of terms used in San Francisco. And multi-platform, which to me sounds like a very clumsy word. Sounds like I'm going to trip, I'm always in heels. So I kind of hate all those terms, transmedia, multi-platform, all that stuff. And I'm just going to say the word engagement. Because that's really what we're talking about, is engaging people. We're all humans, we like to connect, and we like to engage people in ideas, in emotions, in stories. So that's kind of, in conversations, that's really, I've been starting to think that I'm not really a filmmaker, but I'm a conversation maker, because I like to take really complicated subjects, and I like to make you laugh and think and feel about those ideas. Um, so I spent a lot of time thinking about how things are connected. Um, it was very auspicious that the name of this gathering was called Connected because I just spent four years of my life making a movie called Connected, so um, everything happens for a reason. Um, but as much as I'm excited about connectedness globally, I really wrestle with it personally. Um, I'm a mother and a wife, and... Um, and I really struggle with technology. I think that um, while it has so much potential to bring all the minds in the world together, I hate how distracted I've become. And um, I worry about it on some level. So you're going to hear me. Obviously, I've been a cheerleader all my life for technology, founding the Webby Awards, and always experimenting with technology. But personally, I really wrestle with it. So um, my husband and I, my husband's a professor of robotics, so he's really engaged in technology, too. And there was, I don't know if they had that here, but in America last month, there was a National Day of Unplugging. Did anyone hear about that? No. Okay, cool. Um, anyways, it started a year ago, and I'm involved in the group that did it. And um, they said, would you do something for it? And so um, my husband and I decided to rework Allen Ginsberg's Howl. So I'm going to show you a two-minute film about um, my wrestling with technology. 
Oops, I want to just go over there. We have volume up. Good. I saw the best minds of my generation distracted by texting, emailing, tweeting, dragging their cursors through Google links at dawn, looking for an info fix. Angel-headed hipsters burning for the ultra-fast heavenly connection to the starry dynamo and the machinery of night, who wired and networked and hollow-eyed and caffeinated sat up searching in the imaginary comfort of Facebook friends, floating across the tops of cities, contemplating signals, who bared their brains to GPS under satellites and saw Wikipedian angels editing on collective knowledge illuminated, who passed through Wi-Fi hotspots with radiant Bluetooth earphones, hallucinating avatars in low-res Second Life islands among the gamers of Warcraft, who were expelled from chat rooms with dreams, with wireless nightmares, megapixels, alcohol, YouTube, and endless eyeballs, who connected via instant messaging in underwear, burning their money on eBay impulse purchases, tapping into the zeitgeist through the synapses of Twitter, who jacked in continuously 70 hours from Pandora to iPod to Amazon to Flickr to Boing Boing, yakety yakking, primal screaming, unblinking, participating. Unplug! 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 I'm with you in the compulsion to check inboxes, news feeds, and Facebook. Unplug! I'm with you in the addiction and longing for focus. Unplug! I'm with you to cut the umbilical cord of data. Unplug! I'm with you to disconnect from the infosphere. Unplug! I'm with you to power down and revisit the present tense. Thank you. <laughs> it's funny being at a connected conference and starting with that, but I kind of had to because as much as we're all excited with all this stuff, I think it's uh, my family and I just recently, okay, after the National Day of Unplugging, has anyone ever tried to unplug for one day a week? No one. Anyone? It was pretty great, wasn't it? Hard at first. So we tried this five weeks ago, and now we're on our fifth week, and it's pretty profound. And I say that because we're all so addicted, and um, I don't know, I just, I'm, I'm thinking that the next part of evolution as humans is we're going to know when to need to unplug vacation centers with no wireless and all of that, because um, our minds do need downtime. Um, but now I'm going to talk to you about the power of technology. Um, Hitchcock said that a film is made three times, when you write it, when you shoot it, and when you edit it. And I think today there's a fourth way, which is when you distribute it. And there's so many new ways to get your work out. And I think a lot of people, they need to be just as creative with the way that they distribute a film as what they make it. And the studio system has been doing this for years. I mean, you know, it's known that they're putting in at least as much in production, if not many times more, in distribution. But smaller independents, I'm a documentary filmmaker, this is like new. Everyone puts all their energy and all of their money and focus, and they arrive at Sundance or wherever, like handing over the film, and all of their energy is depleted, and they have no more money left. But today, I think you need to have just as, you need to be planning and thinking, this film is step one. And all the different ways that you're gonna get out the film are, is how your film's really going to live in the world. Um, I'm going to give you just a little bit of my background. I've been into computers since I was a kid before the web. Um, and I founded the Webby Awards. And um, when I was working on the Webbies, one of the films I made was called The Tribe. And I did a lot of experimentation with distribution on The Tribe, which came out in um, 
2006 at Sundance. And, and Tribeca Film Festival is actually select, they're doing a retrospective this year and they've chosen it again to show. It's an 18 minute film that explore, well actually I'll show you the trailer and then I'll tell you what stuff we did with it. Over six billion people live on the planet Earth. Thinking of them as a tribe of a hundred people, there would be 60 Asians. 14 North and South Americans, 13 Africans, and 12 Europeans. 30 tribe members would be Christian, 18 would be Muslims, 13 Hindus, 6 Buddhists, and 33 would be other faiths, including of the 100 tribe members, one quarter of one would be Jewish. Within this circle, there was a woman named Ruth who created the Barbie doll. A Jewish woman created Barbie. Maybe Barbie can explain something about how this generation responds to being Jewish today. Since the old days, Jews refer to themselves as members of the tribe. What I was really trying to do with this film was um, trigger a conversation about cultural identity. I thought it was um, very ironic that uh, the creator of Barbie was a Jew, that a Jew had created the ultimate shiksa, and I thought it was a wonderful entry point of discussion on cultural identity in America. But I didn't just want to make a film, I wanted to have this whole discussion piece, so I made this kit that you can see, and it's got a book that goes with it and conversation cards. And the whole concept was that it would be a movable feast, that people could watch this 18 minute film, they would have these conversation cards, they'd have a book and they'd have a whole evening in a box. Now this was in 2006, so Facebook was just starting to get enough people to get that critical mass going. So we did a lot of work going into groups on Facebook that might be interested in Barbie, in identity, cultural identity, religious identity, Jewish identity, Christian identity, Muslim identity, all the niches you could imagine. And it was really wonderful because a conversation started happening on Facebook around the movie. And, um, we, and we also had a lot of live events. So about a year after the film came out, it was asked to be on uh, iTunes. And because of all the community involvement through all of these groups, the minute that we went on to iTunes, it immediately raced past you know, Pixar and all these other films and became the first documentary, documentary to be number one on iTunes. And, and that was a total testament to the community groups that had gathered around the film at film festivals and on the web. And from that, we, de we created this curriculum for professors to use. And, it be and I just kind of saw the film as this like, the film was the appetizer and the discussion afterwards was the main course and I was providing people with all these different ways to have this discussion. And that really triggered um, my creation of um, the Moxie Institute, which is kind of a big name for really my production company and a great team that I get to work with every day. And our goal is really to use new technologies coupled with film and live events to trigger conversation. So. Um, I'm very into Twitter. Is anyone in the audience into Twitter? Yeah. Um, I was at this conference uh, last year and people were bemoaning that Twitter is ruining our brains and ruining the way we think. And um, there was this one uh, professor that got up and said, um, what, what are the main ideas that you know from Marshall McLuhan? And people started kind of medium as a message, people started reading them off, and they were all under 140 characters. And he was talking about how really interesting ideas, if they're distilled down like a good sauce, really what Twitter is to me, I mean, what's so exciting about Twitter is that I feel like I'm being exposed to all these ideas I'd never be exposed to. And really the good tweets to me are about just distilling down an essence of an idea under 140 characters. And I think that Definitely all of these technologies are changing the way we think. I mean, absolutely changing the way that we think. And one of my favorite stories about Albert Einstein is that he was being interviewed when he was alive. And the reporter at the end of the interview said, 
Professor Einstein, if I have any uh, follow-up questions, can I give you a call? And he says, of course. And he says, can I have your number? And he goes over to the bookcase. He pulls out the phone book, and he looks up Einstein. And the reporter was like, you're the smartest man in the world. How come you don't know your own telephone number? And he said, why fill my mind with such useless information if I know where to find it? And I think about that a lot with today because we're not, remember like in school when like the people that memorized the most and held the most dates and knowledge, like those were the smartest kids in the class. But I think was Einstein able to think of the theory of relativity because he wasn't trying to like hold on to these data points in our head and now we know where to find everything and our, we're thinking in such a different way and it's all about finding information and contextualizing it. So I think it really is changing the way that we're thinking. Um, and you know, I know a lot of people are lamenting the way that technology is changing our brains, but um, the big issue back in the Gutenberg age when books were invented, what they were concerned about was, was we were gonna lose our memory. They said, oh, books are horrible. People aren't gonna remember anything anymore. So I always like to kind of think about that when people are kind of saying that technology is destroying our brains. I mean, I think about how much TV I watched, just non-interactive experiences, and you know how with every new technology, there's a lot of lamenting about what it's doing to our brain. But I actually think we're kind of evolving our brains, we're extending our brains in all of these new incredible ways. Um, that's my great hope for the technology in terms of like our capacity for knowledge and the ability to connect with minds all over the world about some of the biggest problems of our day. That's when I get extremely excited, which my movie goes into. Um, I think a major space of innovation that's happening is, you know, if you think about what, how much is searchable on the web in text, there ha there's all these new technologies that are able to translate what's on television or what's on video into text. So suddenly all these oral talks and TV and everything are gonna be searchable, just like the web. And that's gonna be this explosion of new ways to think also when you have all these cultures, like 20% of the world doesn't read. So suddenly you're gonna have all of these people engaged in political processes once they can have speech to text and text to speech. And with all the translating software, I haven't been able to roam around as much. I just got here last night. But I'm really excited about live translation. I've, have you guys seen this word lens thing where it does live translation as, I mean, I think we're just at the tip of such exciting things in terms of, as a filmmaker, thinking that all of my films could be translated into different languages on the fly is incredibly exciting. And then I work with MIT's Geospatial Lab who, there's so much data today. And the interesting thing when you have that much data is you can suddenly see patterns that you never could see before that will tell you there's maybe a problem somewhere like in Africa where there's a lot of counterfeiting of food, like baby formula or whatever, and they can read the barcode and suddenly see if there's discrepancies just through the data. And I think there's gonna be huge potential in that space as well. So all of this stuff about technology led me to this, my new film, which is called Connected. Um, which is kind of half autobiographical and half about the story of connectedness in our world and with humans. And um, that's my team. We all made the film. That was right after we got into Sundance. Um, but we think about a lot of ways about how to explore the idea of connectedness through all these different avenues. And our real goal, whereas the tribe was looking at how to trigger a conversation about cultural identity, Connected is really about, a we wanna trigger a global conversation about connectedness. The good, the bad, the potential, the hope. And we've created all of these tools which I'm gonna share with you um, while we were making it. Um, one of the things that we did throughout the making of the film is went on Facebook and Twitter with anything that we were wrestling with. So I would immediately go to my Twitter community on like, what do you guys think the future of this is? Or when we lost the rights to a particular song we wanted, does anyone have song suggestions or shot ideas? Or And it was a real like push and pull dynamic with me and our community who, um, you know, I feel like were with me since the very beginning of this project. And even as a filmmaker, you'll see like in the short film I showed and the one you'll see, I use a lot of archival footage. We have about 30% original animation and then 
And mostly that was out of necessity. I studied at UC Berkeley and there was no film production courses. So I constantly would recut old movies. And then that really kind of informed my filmmaking style. So most of my films are actually archival images. And if you see all of my films connected is like my eighth film. Sometimes I use a lot of the same images because to me that image represents that idea. And so I'm constantly kind of reordering images to bring about new ways of thinking. So now when I make a movie, I used to go into old closets and search for footage and by eccentric filmmaker collectors. And now I go on the web and I search for archival diving shot from the 20s and I'll get like 20 different shots to choose from. So as a filmmaker, it's like the kind of dreams that I have are that you know, everything on YouTube will be HD quality and license, you know, an easy license for me to get. I mean, because that's the direction, as an, the kind of filmmaker that I am, it's incredible, I'm like a kid in a candy store with the internet on all the images I have access to, and hopefully the rights will get to a head where the rights will be easier to access. That's usually my biggest line item is um, archival footage. Um, I also made a discussion kit for Connected and it has conversation cards, a 100-page book that goes with the movie. It's got the DVD. We're very excited about this new DVD. It's like recyclable. Have you guys seen those new DVDs where they're bendy and they half the carbon space? And, um, and then we have a pretty robust website, obviously, request a screening, which was new a couple years ago, but we're you know, mash up with Google Maps. So if people are in a particular area and they want a screening, they can request it. And then in our, this doesn't work internationally, but we've done the text, but we're really trying to, in our credits, give all the ways that people can engage with the project afterwards. Um, and then we've got on Twitter all the different subjects that we cover in the film so people can see an ongoing discussion. And um, we have a curriculum that we just uh, released at a librarian conference in Philadelphia last week um, for educators to use in their classrooms. And then we're working with the Good Guide on a mobile phone app that goes with the movie. So the movie looks at, you're going to see it. It's so weird. Normally I speak after a movie, but if you haven't seen it yet, but the movie deals with, you know, globalization and connectedness and personal connectedness, all this different stuff. But one of the ideas is that we have all these kind of tactical tools for you to explore the movie, but then we have a real practical tool. And Good Guide allows you to scan a barcode. And s you can see, like, is that company environmentally friendly? Um, they're adding all this, you know, where do they support women? Do they use sweatshops? So in a lot of ways, it's connecting the dots with your everyday purchases. And the bigger goal of the film is thinking in a connected way, which I think will lead to a better world. So here's a real practical application that will be going with the film. Um, and then we put all of our research in this three-dimensional web space so people can see how our research itself is connected. Um, and then we did an experiment with um, Talent House where we asked people all over the world to design our movie poster. So we gave them assets like the logo and photography and 23 countries, you know, entered different posters, which was kind of a fun way to engage our community. And all in all, I just think it's an incredibly exciting time to be a filmmaker. I mean, when I was studying, I wanted to go to NYU Film School because I couldn't afford the equipment. And today, everyone can afford the equipment, everyone can edit, everyone can be their own distributor, they can engage with their audience. I mean, I just feel like, if you're a filmmaker or a media maker today, it's so exciting. And there are no rules, and everyone, including all the people in this room and in this whole pavilion, are trying to figure out what works, which is exciting. What if you went into a space where they had all the rules figured out? So I feel like we're at the kind of forefront of what's happening, and, and all of you here, I'm sure, are involved in some capacity. Actually, I'd love to know how many of you are, I'm not a really big fan of the word content, but how many of you are content creators? Wow. And how many of you are distributors of some way? This should be all the same hands, actually. <laughs> no, um, and how many of you are technologists? That could be the same hands, too. Um, that's cool. I mean, and the fact that this conference is a way for you guys all to interface. Like, I love meeting technologists. Like, what can we do to experiment? Here's some, I got a film. What kind of cool stuff can we do? And that's the kind of conversations that make new um, things work. So I'm incredibly optimistic. I mean, not about everything in this world. But um, <laughs> generally, I'm optimistic about all the things we can do when we come together and connect. And one of my favorite quotes is, go as far as you see, and when you get there, you'll be able to see farther. So I really feel like 
as filmmakers, as conversation makers, as technologists and distributors, the more that we share our, be our best practices and um, work together to kind of figure out what works, I think it's really incredibly exciting time. Um, Roco Films is our international distributor. There you can see somebody right there. Um, and if you want to talk to us, and we're planning a big global experiment with the film. Um, so if you're interested in kind of following what we're doing or getting involved with us in some way, because we're really into partnering, um, uh, we would love to talk to you. I would love to talk to you. Christine would love to talk to you. And um, here's all my contact information. And now you're about to see the movie, which of course has this autobiographical strand. Um, so you're about to get to know me a lot more intimately. I've never been in one of my movies. Um, so that was a very interesting process that I can talk to you about it later, but it kind of required it. When you see the movie, um, you'll know why. But um, thank you for having me. And I will be here for a Q&A. It's a 58-minute version of the film. And then we can talk about it afterwards, unless there's any questions or comments people have now. I think there'll probably be more when it's done. So thank you very much. Um, I'm going to do some Q&A now that I have did a little bit in the middle, but if anyone has any questions, I hope the flow, I mean, as a filmmaker, to have it interrupt in the middle, I have no idea what that did to the experience, but it is life. I know, it's just, make some more Q&A. Um, yeah. Hi, it's uh, me again. Um, can I ask just a really quick one? When, when can I buy it? Or when, when can I get it on iTunes or what? Um, we're still figuring that out, but probably, you know, after our theatrical, it'll probably be on VOD in the, win in the late fall, winter-ish. Yeah. But what... But, I mean, it's so interesting, because I told you all the things I was going to do before you saw it, which is kind of, you know, you see there's obviously the um, personal story, which kind of, it pulled me into the film. But I'm hoping, through my own story, um, you know, I, the guiding principle I held that was when you speak your truth, you speak to the universal truth. And while it was really difficult, as you can imagine, um, to tell this story, it was actually, um, I think it, the ideas go much deeper than had I just done this film without the personal story. Because I had an 80-minute version of this film that was just all ideas, and you just didn't emotionally connect, which you know you you have to in order to I think take ideas far. It was my own learning experience in that. Are there? Yeah. Thank you. Um, considering it's a, a film about being connected and how we're all so interdependent. Um, are you concerned that that's going to uh, uh, that's going to trigger sort of mass mass viewing of the film outside of your control and beyond the theatrical releases and the DVD releases? And uh, well, we're going to be smart. I mean, that's the thing. It's like we're going to do the proper windows. And I mean, you know, with the tribe, I was able to be a lot more. Obviously, it was a short, so we really kind of got to play with it more. But you know, in its sixth year, we're still distributing the tribe, and it's still doing quite well. But you know, obviously, we want to be smart with our windows. So I want to kind of <coughs> do as much as I can within the windows. So this I I global experiment I'm talking about, I mean, maybe I won't show the whole film. Maybe it'll be, we're, we're going to, I just got this grant um, where we're going to be making these short films just about important issues and interdependence and all sorts. So maybe we'll have a potpourri of ways for you to engage emotionally, but we won't show the whole thing. So we're just figuring that out right now because I don't, you know, it, that is the challenge is obviously, we worked really hard on the film. We have investors. We have foundation. A lot of people that I hope will make their money back and be able to invest in more things. So it is, it's that balance of wanting to do lots of experimental, bold, fresh distribution things, but also being smart so I'm protecting you know, the people that have made this film possible. There was, um, uh, there was a chap that spoke at the beginning of the week. Uh, I think his name is Mr. John... Uh, John Chu, someone can Oh yeah, he kicked me. it out. I read about his thing. On the and uh, and what he did, he he fed the social aspect back into the film and recut the film a week later. I would so love to. Yeah, it was a fantastic idea, and I think it worked extremely well. 
Yeah, I mean, maybe, you know, we were thinking on this global day, maybe everyone contributes their thoughts about connectedness. Um, or you guys know Ignite, where you do the 20 slides. You know, maybe we'll do something where everyone is contributing their own ideas about connectedness, and maybe I cut something together from that. But yeah, that's really a cool example. I'm into all that experimentation stuff for this. Not really a question, but I just wanted to say that I think one of a lot of us, and I think the gentleman along the, the row from me, were interested in this because we work in new media or multimedia or the web or whatever it is. And I think there's, there's something in this as well, which if you are thinking about how you spread the message and get educational elements out of it, I think it's also about some of the things about um, big human questions, whether it's our relationship to medicine, our relationship to our families, and it's yeah. there's learnings and discussion points in there far beyond what I think the, the trailer came out with, which was a lot more about technology, yes. and there's a lot more about human interaction. And I think that's the thing that's left me wanting to watch it again and mm. get unpick more little bits and pieces from it and learn more, because it was fantastic. That's, thank you. Well, you know, that's the most exciting thing to me. It's almost like a Rorschach test to people, because um, some people will talk to me just about the ideas. It's amazing. Like, they'll talk to me and be really, like, into just the connectedness or systems theory or something, and other people, it's all the personal. And then some technologists really, you know, I agree with you. To me, it's ultimately about connectedness, human connectedness, the love we have for one another and being present. And But obviously, it goes into a lot of different things, but I think the best entry point into all the stuff we're discussing, I'm sure at this conference on some level, it's about connecting. And what I learned in the making, here I was talking about all these technologies and here my biggest connection, one of my mother is very much alive and I'm very close with her, but obviously losing a parent, everyone's gonna lose a parent. Whatever your relationship was, it's a profound experience. It's one of your biggest connections. And um, so yeah, I'm glad you took that away. That's certainly at the core of the movie for me. But I think a lot of these technologies, I mean, I love hearing, you know, grandparents, one of the fastest growing sectors are older people who feel isolated and are suddenly able to connect. You know, so I, I, it's all about connection. I mean, Twitter, the oxytocin rush, I get that. I was sitting outside, I'm in, you know, getting the like little oxytocin hits and, you know, it's connection ultimately. But I'm really glad you enjoyed it even in the interruption. Are there, um, thank you. Why don't so I show my mother? You, you know, don't the show your mother at the end of the, the life of your father. There's connection as well, I presume. Yeah, I mean, my mother, you know, I'm very close to both of my parents. I feel very blessed. I know that's rare. But it was really about me losing my father. Um, and I tried to plant her. I mean, listen, doing a film about my family, I also tried to make sure my brother and sister, you know, this was such an intense year for my whole family. And... Um, but ultimately, it was about losing my father. And um, I tried to plant her in the very beginning of the movie, really strong. Like I said, both of my parents co-wrote my brain. And I tried to bring her, and I brought her in at the end. But it really um, was about my dad. You know, and anyone that tries to make an autobiographical thing, you know, I was trying to be respectful and sensitive. But, you know, it really was dealing with this core loss of him dying. And he was the co-writer of the movie. So he was pretty core to it in a lot of ways. But she's very important to me. Someday I'll make a film about her, I'm sure. I just uh, was delivered a whole box of, her father was a big film Super 8, and I just got a whole box of his footage, so I need to delve into that. Um, are there any other questions? And again, I, I know it's at the end of the day too. You've been such a kind audience for sitting through the technical thing and being at the end of a really long day. And I know we could all use a drink, which I think is happening at the party, which I hope you'll all go to. <laughs> Are there any other um, questions or comments? If not, thank you very much.